Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Shauna and welcome to Shauna's World. Yay! So how's everybody doing today? Well, I did my fitness and I'm so happy. That was such a nice experience. Um, did my fitness, had the view of the beach. I mean, how cool is that? and afterwards yeah i did the wellness thing didn't stay as long as i wanted to but i'm i'm pretty content i mean it's really nice to um lay outside it's wind protected so there's no wind and you're just laying in the sun and yeah it gives you lots of time to think so however as I was laying outside, actually, um, when I was doing the workout, um, I've been watching the show, The, Ultim the Ultimatum, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I have some things to say. I took a few notes, and um, oh my gosh, first thing is I want to say is they're all so young. I mean, oh my gosh, I mean just reminds me you know back when I was young and was like actually thinking about you know all the little problems I thought I had but they weren't actually problems at all I mean okay I guess for that time you know you know when you're trying to find the right partner or the person to settle down with or to hook up with you know you make issues out of issues that aren't really there or problem or situations that aren't really there you know and I thought the show was cute and very was well put together and um yeah first thing I want to say is all the couples were seriously young and I personally think if I had to do it all over again which I mean I can say from my experience I, I really did I took my time you know as far as um I didn't get, you know, I didn't get married until later, and I had babies later, and um, I guess that has to go, I guess the reason is because I saw, you know, how my mother, I mean, she was, I won't say miserable, but I think she totally regretted having a child at such a young age. My mom had me when she was 22 so I mean if I think back when I was 22 and having a kid you know that is just way too young and I and I think you know being that young anything before 25 I, I really think you should get out of your system party you know date around you know make your experiences even 25 is still young I mean I would even say before 30 you know anything before 30 you should really get it out of your system and then later on later settle down I mean cause that's not always the case with everybody I mean some people just meet and they just know okay this is going to be the one but I've seen so many couples that or I've met so many couples that you know they they hooked up when they were younger and you know they had not dated around and then you know later on they want to get that out of their system and I won't say by then it's too late but it's just not the same you know you you know and if you have kids involved you know you can't just think about yourself you also have to think about your children and that <clears throat> in that aspect um um you know when you leave the partner Yeah, there's a lot of thought to be put into it. So, you know, when you're young, I think it's good to just get it out of your system and party and act crazy and, like I said, date around. And I don't know. I, I personally thought all the couples were young and a little bit too young for me to be thinking about marriage. I mean, I certainly wasn't thinking about marriage. I was thinking about uh, which party am I'm hitting the next day. And, you know, each and every day there was a new party and a new dude I was fallen for or light so um that that's all part of being young and um that's you know what a lot of those or I would say in young, young people in general what they don't realize is you won't get that youth back you know you 
I know everybody's like, yeah, but I know this is the one. And da, da, da. But I'm like, dude, live a little bit longer and you'll see. You know what I'm saying? The issues you think or the problems you think you have now, they're not real problems. Trust me. So, however, I took some notes. So I'm just going to go through and, and give my little two cents because I have to speak on it. I mean, I thought the show was excellent. Made made you really do a lot of thinking and you know, just, I mean, three weeks is actually no time, you know, to, to, to be like, okay, I got it together. You know, this is, I know this is what I want. And I saw a lot of people who just stepped into big mistakes and I'm not like, I'm not a pessimist person, but I am pretty optimistic. And I think they are going to so regret it. I mean, some of those couples are going to really regret it later on down the line. So let's get down with the first breakdown. Um, I have Zay and Ray. Zay and Ray, they're cute. I mean, I personally think um, Zay was obviously very immature. I mean, I don't, I don't re remember their ages, but I know they were all, you know, very young. I think he was under 25 and, and so was Ray. Um, Ray was cute. She, Ray was the, the lady and, and Zay was the guy. And Ray gave, was giving Zay the ultimatum that, you know, he had to you know, um, marry her or else. And so at the end, um, yeah, it turned out to be a little twist because Ray, I know I'm giving out the information. I hope you guys already seen the show, but if you haven't, well, <laughs> watch the show and then come back and then listen to my opinion. But, um, Ray, um, she was actually, I thought she was really smart in her choice. She actually was the one who gave Zay the ultimatum. And, um, okay, first of all, okay, let me, let me go back to the very, very beginning. Basically, there were six couples who came on, right? And, um, each one of the couples were given ultimatums, um, there was Zay and Ray. Ray had given Zay an ultimatum. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I know that she wanted him to marry marry her. Um, she wanted to walk out with a ring on her finger. And then there was Colby and Madeline. And Colby was given Madeline the ultimatum, the guy, which is usually is quite unusual, but I always like ding, ding, ding. If a guy's like already pressing a woman to marry then I always I'm always a little bit skeptic because usually guys are different from women you know guys they like to they're the ones who really want to get it out of the system it's usually the women who want to you know get out there and you know get married and they all have this you know um fantasy or this this thought of you know having this beautiful wedding so actually Colby was given Madeline the ultimatum but Madeline was like so unsure it was so obvious and then there was uh jake and april um april was the little firecracker i mean she was so outspoken but i detected a lot of um i don't know i i found her to be very um self-centered you know it's all about me and um i felt like that she really didn't um listen to jake and his opinion and what he wanted. He was a very, you know, he was quite, I wouldn't say soft-spoken, but he was like definitely one of those type of guys um, who kind of went along with the program. But April was obviously the one who was given uh, Jake the ultimatum. Look, you either marry me, I want kids, you know, and Jake was like, no, I'm not ready for that because, you know, I want to get my finances in order, which is to me an awesome argument because, what people don't fail to, which a lot of young people don't realize is money plays a huge issue. It might not play the issue now, but later on it will, trust me, plays a big issue. So it is 
you know, a very wise decision to let that man get his finances in order and don't, you know, don't rush it. You know, money is, I would say money is one of the big factors why a lot of people break up money, kids, and infidelity, unfortunately. I can say that now because, you know, I've been there. I'm old enough. <laughs> I still got a lot to learn, but I know some things. <laughs> So, one second. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, April was giving Jake an ultimatum. And Jake did not want to get married because he didn't feel like he had his finances together. And then there was the very, very first couple, which was Lauren and Nathan. Now, um, Nathan, once again, we have a guy who's given the woman an ultimatum. So, and, you know, once again, I always, you know, have to be a little bit weary about that because guys aren't usually that fast in wanting to get married and he was giving Lauren the ultimatum he really wanted kids and Lauren did not want any kids and so um you know it was like okay you either have kids with me or we, you know we talk about and get married or or else and so you know she was just like not really into the idea of having kids um, it was obvious that they had issues and so you know it was just not a good thing she didn't want any kids with this guy and then there was Shanique and Randall um, Shanique and Randall cute little couple but it was obvious that Shanique was the the one um, who was giving uh, Nathan Randall the ultimatum Shanique um, very smart young lady, beautiful. Um, she knew what she wanted, but um, once again, another one of those cases, like um, I think she dominated Randall and Randall felt like he wasn't often heard from her. He, he felt that she was very immature. I mean, I thought she was smart, but you know, yeah, she was immature and, and that's okay because they're all young. They are immature. I mean, they're young, so they're allowed to make mistakes and should be able to make mistakes. That's what I'm saying. Marriage, and a lot of people just don't get get it that it's a it's it's a it's a contract. It's it's like entering in a you know a business with a business partner. You know, you guys got to be on the right you know the same flow, or otherwise, you know, this is they're going to be issues, you know, certain things need to be dealt with. And that's why it's good to give things time, time, time is of essence. Time will tell you what's going to happen, really. However, okay, so Shanique was given Randall the ultimatum. And then there was Alexis and Hunter. Um, Alexis and Hunter were also one of the very first couples. Um, Alexis um, was giving Hunter the um, ultimatum. She wanted to get married, and it was very clear that she wanted a man, you know, who had the finances and who can provide. And um, Hunter wasn't really there yet, and he was a little bit unsure. And um, you could tell that Alexis was, yeah, I think she was a bit insecure and was definitely pushing or you know I think she was the pushy one and wanted Hunter you know she wanted to lock him down I guess because she was feeling like okay I'm getting older I think they were the oldest couple I'm not a 100% sure I had to check and check out their ages but I think they were the oldest couple so I think for her it was even more so like okay um let me hurry up you know, you, you need to let me know what the deal is so I can move on, which I totally get that. I mean, at a certain age, you know, if you've been with a person for a long time and yeah, I would say around 27, 28, you know, if you've been with a person and they're not really sure, then, you know, it's, it's best to, you know, figure it out. And, and if you guys can't get on the same page, it's split, you know, it doesn't make sense to hang on to a person who's not in the same direction as you or you know set some goals or whatever but however um okay so basically <laughs> one 
one second. So basically, um, the couples um, were basically given the task that they they were going to have to um, choose a different partner out of that group to hang out with um, to see if you know maybe maybe the reason why they're having doubts maybe there's somebody else in that group that might be able to fulfill their needs and maybe they can see themselves being with them so they had to um, basically swap partners and find somebody who they would perhaps match with and yeah just I guess it was just testing the waters to see you know how long or how strong these couples relationship really are you know if they're really going to be able to withstand the the uh pressure of yeah seeing their partner with somebody else within that group or however so um yeah so um yeah basically they were um mixing and mingling and trying to figure one another out and seeing if they can, you know, hook up and perhaps live together and play marriage for three weeks and basically have nothing to do with their partner and, um, yeah, see if, if it's, if they're going to be able to still hook up and walk out with their old partner. So, um, let's start off with Ray and Zay. Zay um, chose Shanique um, and Ray chose to be with Jake and Colby took April, but that was only because um, I believe nobody connected with April. Yeah, nobody connected with April. And um, Madeline chose Randall because she was very attracted to Randall. Um, now, the first couples that I had mentioned before, Lauren and Nathan. Nathan, actually, he, I guess he, who did he, he liked Madeline, right. But Madeline wasn't for him. She wanted to choose Randall. And so Colby was going to choose Lauren and then there was like this surprise uh, proposal from Nathan. Now mind you they had all gotten together or they had all you know talked to one another and tried to figure out okay is this going to be you know can we see ourselves living together for the next three weeks you know how is this going to be so um uh yeah so um Nathan wind up proposing to Lauren even though she was about to get chosen from Colby and Nathan according to what he's saying he said he didn't realize he didn't have anybody to really choose from and he kind of got scared and so he really wanted to 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 be with Lauren and you know even though she says she didn't want kids that he would somehow try to look over that so he wound up proposing to her and she wound up taking on his offer now I personally thought that was really yeah that was selfish from Nathan to take away the chance that she you know got to know with somebody else and I think Lauren was also a bit I don't know. I felt it was fake because she anyway did not want to marry this guy. I mean, not necessarily not marry, but she didn't want to have kids with him and she had doubts. So if you have, if you're going into a relationship and you're about to marry somebody and you have doubts, you know, my advice is to step out, give it some time, do not rush into things because you think, okay, this is this is going to be my last proposal or the last person who's going to propose to me. So let me jump on it. That that was the impression I got from Lauren, you know, because she was like, yes. Although she was just, you know, she had basically connected with the Colby guy. And um, yeah, and she wound up taking Nathan's offer. And so I thought, oh, that was, that was a really bad 
bad choice. It wasn't good at all and quite selfish from Nathan. So I don't know. I'm like I said, I am a very optimistic person, but um, I think we must be realistic. So I, I don't know. I don't see this couple making it, even though during the reunion, they did say that they uh, eventually went out and seek some help some therapy but if you already got to get some therapy in the beginning so you know i don't know about that <laughs> you know one second so and then there was uh yeah like i said shanique and zay wind up becoming a couple and then randall and madeline became a, a, a couple and um, madeline was really attracted to randall i mean she was just like this is I can see myself with this guy. I'm so attracted to him. It, it was so obvious that she was not, <clears throat> excuse me, that she was not into Colby whatsoever. And then, okay, and then there was the, the last couple, Alexis and Hunter. Um, they're also one of the first couples. Um, Hunter wind up um, proposing to Alexis and... Um, also one of those shocking proposals like that came out of nowhere I didn't quite understand that um, actually actually I wouldn't I mean I I didn't I didn't understand his I didn't understand the reason why he he proposed to her but now that I think back on it I do understand why because I, I believe it's because he didn't find anybody who who he connected with. So I think he got scared and the way for him to exit the show real quick, because I, I assume that he didn't want to be on the show. Um, there were, I guess, quite a few couples or had mentioned that they didn't really want to be on the show and they didn't understand why they were being put on the show. For example, Jake, who made it very clear that it, he was not um, wanting to be on the show. But however, Hunter, yeah, I believe the only reason why he he also popped, like I said, he popped the the marriage question to Alexis, even though, um, even though he said that he wasn't sure, Alexis had given Hunter the ultimatum. Um, she had given him the ultimatum that you know she wanted a ring on her finger, and so on. Okay, so. Yeah, as I was saying, yeah, Hunter, I believe he got scared because he didn't connect with nobody. And just like Hunter didn't connect with nobody, Alexis also didn't connect with anybody. Um, although she did find Colby attractive. And here's the, here's the kicker with Alexis. Um, she came off to me as being extremely insecure. Um, insecure and somehow um a little bit arrogant like like um she was shocked that Kobe didn't choose her you know I'm, maybe she's thinking okay I'm I'm beautiful I'm 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 the typical woman that every man would desire I mean she was blonde she was she was cute but I don't know something about her she had a bit of an arrogance there's something about her I didn't find good however um, she chose Kobe and Kobe was like, uh, no, I don't want you. I, I, I found somebody else attractive. And so for some reason, she could not understand why Kobe didn't want to choose her. She didn't find the other guy. She didn't find Zay attractive. She didn't like Jake. Um, she didn't like Nathan, nor did she like Randall. So she was like, Kobe is her type. And, um, that's another thing too. I think Alexis didn't really give the other guys any chance. I believe it's because of their house, because of the way they looked. Um, I think she's a, a person who connects with people on the outside more. Not, I wouldn't say materialistic, but she's a little bit um, superficial. 
I would say, in her connections. It's it's about money, it's about looks, and for her, that's the most important. Because I don't really think she really got to know the guys and, and actually for their personality. Whereas I believed everybody else, you know, was really getting to know the people and their personality. And, and Alexis only connected with Colby because she was like, he's cute and he's the only guy I want to connect with. But however, Colby didn't want her to choose her as a partner. He wanted to choose Lauren. And so, therefore, she was just like, I can't believe this guy didn't choose me. And so, she was like having a breakdown and a fit because of that. And then, and then when it came down to um, the couples having to choose who they wanted to be with, um, that's when Hunter popped the will you marry me question. And it was just like, everybody was like totally shocked. And then... And then Alexis, which I thought was kind of, I don't know, I like I said, I think her ego was hurt. You know, Alexis went over to Madeline and was like, you know, watch out for this guy, you know. You know, and she was just, you know, talking dirty about him just because he didn't want to choose her, take her. I mean, he didn't find her attractive or probably didn't like her personality and he just wasn't interested. And she just didn't really want to take no for answer so and and once since she was very relieved that hunter did propose to her because i mean actually that's actually what she wanted anyway she wanted this guy to propose even though she clearly stated that you know money was an issue was a big factor and um however <laughs> the tr the show is a trip guys i can just say wow um Okay, so I don't want to make the video too long. I mean, I can go on about these couples, but um, I personally, okay. The couple who really genuinely hooked up and really found one, there was an attraction to one another, another was Jake and uh, Jake and Ray. They genuinely hooked up and not hooked up on a sexual in a sexual way but more so they looked at one another and saw that their personalities match and they complimented each other I mean you can tell that they were both at ease and they just had a good time um Madeline and um Randall I would say they also had a really good genuine connection i mean she was obviously very attracted to him and he was very attracted to her and they complimented each other but however somehow it got a little bit complicated a little bit complicated in the end and i think madeline was like i mean i think everybody should have a checklist of you know how your partner should be but i don't know i think she was i don't know it's some about her. Um, I think she would. I think she was. I think she's young, and I think she's just wanting to test the waters and and figure out, you know, who could fit with her, who can compliment her, you know. And I think she just really wanted to, you know, test that with Randall. Um, however, they didn't. They didn't go that extra step. At least they didn't state that they went that extra step, but. Um, they had a little bit of a disagreement, and yeah, and you could see that mm, Madeline can be a little bit, I think she can be a little bit difficult, perhaps. I don't know, maybe a little bit, well, a little teeny bit toxic. I mean, just because of her wording and how she was very quick to dismiss uh, Randall when he tried to express himself, and Randall made it very clear to Madeline that like, you know, stating that you're a lot like my my girlfriend, uh, Shanique, who's also very dismissive and doesn't hear me out. So, um, yeah, I could see that that could be a problem. But however, they still very, there was an attraction and they really liked one another. So I, I was really shocked how it ended. I, I personally think they both did a, a bit of a cop out, but however... One second. 
um, Shanique and Zay, um, I would say they, I could see them as friends. Um, they did have a, a few disputes. Um, Zay comes from a, a dysfunctional, very dysfunctional background, and he stated that, and so he made it very clear that, you know, there's certain, you know, um, situations where he needs help on because he, do, he doesn't really know how to react. Okay, I'm back. Um, oh, shoot. Now, where was I? <laughs> Kids. Um, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, so Zay made it very clear that he has communication issues. And I, I found Shanique to be very mature. I mean, she's very... Um, I mean, she was mature, but she's immature. Very, dis she can be very dismissive and um, not wanting to hear what somebody else has to say. Very opinionated, which I think is good and has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, Zay, like I said, he he claimed that he's from a dysfunctional background, so therefore, he needs yeah he needs help or needs time and figuring out how. Um, how to communicate so he made that very clear um which i think is okay i think it's fair i mean the guy's young and yeah give him time that's why i say i think rushing into to to the marriage thing is just not always the answer you know people fall in love and you know and they only see the the good part and the the, the, the beginning of the part but you know it's 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 work and so um i think it's okay However, Shanique and, and Zay, it was obvious. To me, it was very obvious. There was an attraction, but um, Shanique was, is very, very, very much so in love with Randall. And so I kind of knew that that wasn't going to go anywhere. And Zay was just kind of like going with the flow. You know, whatever happens, happens. And okay, yeah, he would have been disappointed if Ray would have chosen to be with somebody else. But on the other hand, you know, if it makes her happy then okay oh well so I kind of liked his answer in that aspect because you could tell that he wasn't holding her holding her down even though you know uh he wasn't the one who's given the ultimatum but however um let's see uh yeah Jake like I said Jake and um Ray they had a very very nice connection Madeline no April and Colby April and Colby were like friends until the end of the the um session, the three weeks. They kind of hooked up. So I found that to be kind of funny. You know, at first they were like, well, we're going to be strong. We both know that we are into our partners and and da, 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 da. And then I don't know. And then they hooked up at the end. So that didn't make sense. You know, I'm like, I don't know if you ask me. I think both of them are, I think they're both narcissistic. I hate to say it, but I, I find, I found them to be very egoistic all about me. And so that they wouldn't have worked anyway as a couple, but for them to hook up at the end just made no sense. Maybe they just hooked up to, I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't quite get that. Ooh. Gotta keep the throat hydrated. <laughs> Talking. Um yeah, so yeah, at the end. Um at the end, um they were given the ultimatum it was the the, fi the final day. Um, they were given the ultimatum and so they had to figure out, oh, right, right. During the time that, you know, the couples were staying with one another or living together, they got a chance to meet, um, one another's family members. And so, um, I mean, I'm trying to think, um, I found Shanique's family to be very, I thought they were sweet, very, she comes from a big family her mom and her dad, um, you know, auntie, brother, sister, whatever. It was a big family. So um, 
for Zay to come over there and 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 sit with Shanique's family. I think that was like something new for him. I mean, because because they were a very big family and and but they were sweet though, you know. You know, they were telling them that, you know, we could we would accept you, you know, and um you know, we understand you didn't cuz Zay was like I don't have a family, so I thought that was sweet. Um but once again, I didn't see any connection between those two. So it was, it was obvious that it was going to be platonic, nothing, nothing serious. Um, Colby, I mean, I'm trying to think, Colby parents or mother, mother sat down with, um, Colby sat down with, um, mother sat down with, uh, Madeline and they had a little discussion um, and Madeline was saying how she, she's like, um, always finding something wrong in, in somebody. And so she was one, beginning to wonder if there was something wrong with her. Um, and who else? Uh, Jake met Ray's family and Ray was talking about how her dad never liked any of the guys that she dated, but... For some reason, he took a liking to Jake, and um, yeah, she found that to be good. I mean, they were to me they were the best match, honestly. The rest of them, I was like, okay, they obviously had major issues. I mean, they they all had issues. I mean, come, they're young. Come on now. Like I said, marriage is a big step, you know. I think a promise ring is enough, but however, um, so yeah, like at the end they would given the final ultimatum that, you know, the the person who was given the ultimatum had to come to a decision, okay, are you going to follow through with marriage or are you going to walk away with somebody else? So at the end, uh, Ray did not choose Zay. Ray um, doubted. I mean, she obviously had fallen for Jake big time. I mean, they had a huge and strong connection and it was obvious that, you know, they, they really liked one another. So um, I think the reason why she didn't choose Zay is um, I guess she saw him as being immature because when she had told him that she didn't want to be with him anymore, he wind up um, staying out the whole night. He wanted to go out and get drunk and didn't come home to eight o'clock in the morning. And Ray had been calling him and texting him and he would just did not answer to her so she was turned off which she has every right to be I mean that that's you know that was very immature from Zay's side so it was obvious that going into marriage was like a no-go so she chose right she was like this is it I don't see it happening you know we got too much to work on so it's best if we go our separate way so I thought that was cool one second Yeah, and then um, the biggest shock was Colby and Madeline. I'm, I was very disappointed. Okay, Colby, I mean, it was obvious that he he was very infatuated with Madeline. I mean, like I said, he showed a lot of narcissistic tendencies, but he was obviously, Madeline was his woman, but Madeline was not feeling the same with, for him. And she obviously wanted to be with Randall. And, and I had the impression that she just really wanted to get it out of her system. That she wanted to experiment, you know, be with other guys. Which is okay. She has every right to be. She's young. Okay. And I, like I said, that's why I think all couples should go through that moment. And, you know, make that experience of, yeah, experiencing other people. So, at the end, it was quite shocking when... Um, Colby proposed to Madeline and Madeline um yeah basically uh at first she was like it was a it was the night before the the ultimatum the the night before the decision making and she made it very clear that she did not want to be with Colby because she found out that he had um cheated on her and and so she was you know very disappointed in this guy and was like okay I don't see myself being with this person so actually it left off you know you had the impression okay so we know that that couple's not going to make it but 
On the last day of the ultimatum, Kobe did propose to Madeline and Madeline did say yes. And I was just like, what the heck? I mean, to me, it was so, I was, I was, I was disappointed in Madeline. I mean, Mad, I thought Madeline was like going to stick to her guns and be like, I'm going to go and find somebody who I feel like listens to me and I feel appreciated and so on and so forth. So I was really, really, really shocked and disappointed that she wound up choosing Colby. Um, I think she settled and, um, that is one of those marriages where I see maybe 10, 15 years from now, they're going to have kids and, and, and she's going to be, they're probably both going to be, uh, cheating on one another. You know, it's just, it's not going to end up right, you know, mm -hmm. because obviously they went into it. it. It wasn't complete and it wasn't, yeah, they went in with problems and, and doubts. And well, I would say from Madeline's side, she was obviously very unhappy and um, I don't see it working at all. I hate to be Mrs. Debbie Downer or the pessimist here, but hey, guys, you got to be realistic. You know, see things for what it is. I mean, sometimes it's easier to say things because you're standing on the outside of the couples and you already see them as making that experience, you know, that that big mistake, you know. Whereas, you know, like I, I think a lot of people the reason why they rush into marriage or get married is because yeah a lot of people feel as though that they won't be complete unless they're married I think you know if you're not married yet to take your time really get to know a person and you know slow them down see them in all aspects and go by your instincts if you are not feeling good or if you have having doubts or whatever then move on you know I always believe if one door closes, a bigger one shall open. So, however, that was a big disappointment. Um, but, however, congratulations. They did get married. And they got married that same day. The same day that he proposed to her, um, they got married. He was like, I don't even want to wait. I want to get married now. So, that gives me kind of ding, 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 you know, bell alarms. Um, I don't know. When guys are like you know, so quick and wanting to, to, to tie you down. There's something that might not go too well in that. Um, I don't know. I told you he gave me narcissistic, um, vibes and, um, I don't know. I think he can be a very cold person. That's my feeling from this guy. I don't know. I didn't get good vibes from him at all. Okay. However, more power to him um at the end she was even pregnant so i was just like god dang they really didn't waste any time so good luck to them we'll see how things roll 10 20 years from now <laughs> okay however um so uh jake and april jake and april was another one that shocked me now jake i mean it was obvious that april was the dominant one in that relationship and jake was the passive one but he, like I said, he had such a strong connection with Ray. And so I just, for me, I just knew that that he was definitely going to, um, yeah, I, I had the feeling that he wasn't going to choose April. But on the other hand, he's a, he's a mama's boy. And I could tell he listens to a lot of what his mama says. And so I had the impression that... Um, that he might choose April just because of the fact that his mom said that she really, really liked April and she saw that April was good for him. So, second. Okay. So, yeah. So, I had the impression that, um, yeah, Jake was a mama's boy. So, I, I thought, okay, he's probably going to marry her just because the mom just sees her um son with April even though I thought I don't think that's good because it's obvious that he wasn't happy with April. April was very dominating and very self-centered. Um I picked up some narcissism from her as well. You know, you know the whole time it's all about 
her and what she wants, you know, and there's no compromise. You know, I want a ring on my finger and that's it. And I want to have some babies and you better give it to me, basically, or you got to go. So that was my impression. And she was young, too. She was only 23. So, again, so young. I, I just don't get these people. Um, I don't know. And obviously, they there was some some not, well, it was no infidelity, but because they, they're not married, but there was some cheating going on, which is oh, I mean, they're young. I mean, they they need to test the water. So that's why I say, it's not good to to be tied down and get into a relationship at that young age because you really do need to get out there and experiment and just get it out of your system. And it doesn't necessarily mean you need to sleep around, but I think you should date. They had all types of guys just to, you know, or and vice versa. The guys also need to test the waters and see, you know, date all types of women and, you know, just learn different personalities out there, you know, and um, get it out of your system, basically. And when it's time, you'll know when it's time to really settle. But anything younger, anything younger, like in the early 20s, it's just too young. You're, you're a baby still, in all honesty. You're still a baby. Back in those days, I didn't see it that way. But now I can say it. I mean, sh you're still a baby. Okay. And then there was, yeah, Shanique and Randall. Um, Randall, I mean, that couple also shocked me. Um, Randall was obviously, he was smitten from Madeline. I, I really believe, they, I mean, it was obviously a very strong attraction between those two, Madeline and Randall. So once again... Um, they were given an ultimatum, and um, yeah, he expressed that, you know, he thought that she would be the right fit for him, so he did propose to, to Shanique, and I was, I was very disappointed because um, I don't think he was being true to himself. I think he only um, proposed to her because you know maybe he didn't want to embarrass her and also because maybe he felt a little bit pressure you know um you know maybe from her family she comes from a very big family um they didn't really talk or show too much of his family so I don't know maybe he just felt good with the family and you know maybe he felt like he was obli had you know he was obligated to to, to propose to her but he actually really did I mean I don't know but I mean even though they said that they didn't do anything uh Randall and Madeline I personally think they did hook up you know and they just not saying it but I think they did hook up secretly because they they had such a strong attraction to one another and for them you know for him to just turn around and be like okay Will you marry me? And I thought that was a cop out. I, I think they were totally not ready. So, yeah. Um, right now I'm looking at the reunion and lots of, yeah, interesting things <laughs> going on in the reunion. Um, oh, yeah. Um, because... I, I don't know if I mentioned yet. Yeah, Jake and April, Jake did not, um, he did not propose to April. I don't think I mentioned that. He didn't propose to April and he walked, she walked away from him because she was just like, okay, um, if he doesn't want to propose to me, then I'll go out and find somebody else. And I thought that was smart from Jake. He actually did, you know, he didn't propose. And I was, I was very proud of him because I, it was obvious that he also was unhappy, and he really liked Ray. I mean, they really took a liking to one another, so um, he stayed true to himself. So I think that was a very smart mood move, and um, it was kind of cute because at the end, um, this was before the reunion, um, he offered, um, they showed... Um, they showed Jake and Ray coming together, and Jake asked Ray if she would be interested in taking a trip with him anywhere in the world where they wanted to go. And so, of course, she was really excited and happy about that, and um, 
So I thought that was cute. I thought it was really cute. But I knew back in back in my mind, it's also probably not a good idea if those two were to hook up because you need time to heal. Um, a lot of parent, a lot of parents, a lot of couples, you know, make the mistake. Heck, I made it too. That you know, once you get out of a relationship, you jump into a new one. I, I think you need time. You know take time to get to know a person don't rush it you know you can see one another platonic build a friendship but it would be very toxic for one to just jump out of one relationship and into another without you know clearing you know what happened in the past you know so you know you don't make the same mistakes so however um they want this you know she was like all oh, static. i was like yeah so they were kind of cute so they both did the right thing by not you know, staying in their relationship and letting it go. So, um, yeah, like I said, I was, um, I'm watching now the reunion. And so they were basically asking the couples, you know, how it developed. One second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so like I had mentioned before, Colby and Madeline, they got married the same day. And yeah, they were already pregnant. Seven months, to be exact. I don't know when this, this show was pre-recorded. So maybe their child is already baby. Heck, maybe they had two or three more kids after that. I don't know. I wish them a lot of luck. Um, Zay, they didn't really go into detail. But Zay seems to be, you know, out and about. And he's single and ready to mingle, I guess. Um, but it's obviously he needs to work on himself. But, you know, he's being young and taking his time. So I think it's okay. Um, yeah, and Jake, they asked, um, you know, what happened with Jake and, and April. And obviously they, they did stay apart. But, you know, they were still, you know, talking and stuff as friends and Apparently, she was coming around and still hanging out with them. But, you know, basically, she moved on. And, and you know, one thing that which really proves to me even more that she's narcissistic. Um, she jumped into a new relationship. Yes, she did. Miss April jumped into a new relationship. And she's like, yes, and we moved into one another. And I'm just thinking, oh, boy, this is so... This is typical for narcissist people. You know, they jump immediately into a new relationship and ready to tie the knot. And so she was just like, yes, this guy, he adores me. He wakes up every day and tells me how much he loves me and and is, you know, wanting to know when we're going to have our babies and, and get married. I'm just thinking, oh, God, Jake can be glad that he kept, kept the stepping and kept walking because Ava would have been bad news he would have been so miserable with that woman oh gosh I mean seriously I mean when you guys get a chance to watch the show you'll know what I'm talking about um yeah so yeah and then they asked the question um what happened with Jake they asked Jake and Ray what happened did they ever take a trip and so shockingly they were both like no we didn't take the trip we decided to just basically um, work on ourselves. And I just thought, okay, that's really positive. Um, you know, they obviously were attracted to one another, but they didn't take that trip together. I'm thinking, dog, I would at least take a trip, you know? I mean, how often do you get an opportunity to go anywhere in the world? You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I mean, I think it was good that they didn't jump into a new relationship, which I think is totally cool, but I at least would have taken the trip and, you know, just maybe you could meet other people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would have done that at least. But however, they didn't, they didn't, um, they didn't take the trip together. And I don't know if they're going to come together or not. I didn't really get that impression, but of course I'm still watching it. So I, there will be a part two to this because I'm still watching it. I think the show is awesome. I mean, it really gives you a lot to think about. And yeah, and it just kind of reminds you, um, if you're older like I am, then kind of makes you think back on your dating experiences and, um, yeah, all the, the little things you were freaking about and thought were problems, and they weren't problems. <laughs> they weren't problems. Um, 
Yeah, and then they won. They um, interviewed the the first, the very first couples, Lauren and Nathan. Lauren and Nathan were the the couple um, where Lauren didn't want any children, and Nathan really wanted the child. So um, they asked the question, you know, why did you propose to 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 um, Lauren so quick and then he came out with the truth and said which I knew that was even you know even more like ugh, that was not a good move they however they're not even married yet so I don't know they're probably not gonna get married or I don't know to me they got a lot to work on and um I don't know this Nathan guy gives me he doesn't give me such good vibes. I mean, because like I said, he is so obsessed about having kids. And um, I don't know, it's obviously there's something he's he's obviously trying to tie a woman down. Maybe he's abusive and, you know, because that's kind of like what abusive guys do. They want to tie you down real quick so they can, you know, so you'll be dependent on them. So I don't know. Gotta get some light in here. It's getting dark. <laughs> Guys, gotta still be able to see me. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, so everybody was, you know, everybody was expressing how shocked they were that, you know, that Nathan proposed to um, Lauren. And so he actually admitted and said the reason why he proposed to um Lauren was okay he said that he was smitten and he loved her and and just couldn't see himself with anybody else but he also said that he didn't know who he, who he was going to choose he didn't have nobody to pick so I'm like check get that get a load of that I mean that that's not good you know not a good start and then uh the host um asked about Alex and Hunter and, and um, the question was also asked, Hunter, why did you propose to Alexis? And so, you know, his answer was like, well, I just didn't see myself, you know, it, it really scared me to, you know, to think that, you know, she would be living with somebody or being with somebody. But the funny part was nobody chose her. Nobody wanted to be with her. The guy that she wanted to be with was just like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Excuse me for cursing, but he was like, oh, no. So I thought that was kind of funny. But so she says that. Um, so she says that they're not married yet and they're planning to get married. And um, uh, Hunter's mother is a, a wedding planner. So, wow, how convenient is that? And so the host had also asked her, um, he was like, OK, and we know that, you know, finance was just like a big plus for you. So. How is that working out for you? Did, did is Hunter now bringing home the bacon? Is he now up up this thing? And so, so she claims that okay, you know everything is okay, and um, you know that's not really the the first you know the biggest priority about the money. The the main thing is that they, you know, that they can get along and da da da. But I think I don't know. I I had the impression. I think Alexis is also a little bit pushy and settling it's obvious it was obvious that is very important to her and i think later on the line that is going to be an issue later on you know especially when she expresses hey i want to i want a man who's going to be able to support me i don't want to be the one who makes the most money which i can totally understand that um and so you know even though they're planning the wedding and stuff but I think that's going to be an issue. Um, that's something they, they I, I personally think each couple should have taken on this experiment just to see, you know, um, you know. Yeah, I think I think they should have given it a chance, you know, instead of just copping out and doing the easy thing by proposing, you know, maybe it was a way to just get off the show, you know, but however, um yeah, Hunter and Alexis, they, they claimed they were getting married in June. Like I said, I don't know when the show was pre-recorded, so maybe they're already married now. I don't know. Got to check it out. She can follow them up on um, social media. So, 
one second <laughs> so that is my take on the ultimatum um i am sure i'm sorry guys i know it was a long video but i just wanted to express and share my feelings about this show i i thought it was very good it was very interesting and really makes you think and um yeah i mean i think we can see you know the experiences they make we can apply it to ourselves and and how we you know decide to date or if you're in a marriage and you know you can apply those experiences to yourself and how you take on experience you know situations and um you know if you're married or if you want to be married um are you giving it time did you work on yourself you know are you settling you know you got to really put these all into put, take these all into consideration i i really don't think you really start to know who you really and truly are is until you're much older unfortunately i know i and i'm not just saying that because i'm older now i'm just saying that just from experience i really don't you know i don't really think you know you know i don't think you know yourself or know who you truly want to be with until you're older or you know you really have to know yourself and know what you truly like and um yeah i think one has to really get a chance to to know yourself and then i think once you start to get to know yourself you you'll eventually find that partner who reflects you know what what's inside of you and what you want to have if that makes any sense However, guys, I don't know. If you get a chance, take a look at, take, watch the show. It's good, okay? I mean, I, you, you're going to watch it. I'm sure you're going to finish it in two days. I guarantee you, because it's good. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. And until next time, bye. Oh, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to hear more from me, I'm constantly uploading new videos. Subscribe. Until next time. Bye.